Meantime, ISIS fighters are being forced to take a steep pay cut. And this U.S. airstrike on a bank in Mosul last week may be part of the reason. A leaked ISIS memo informed fighters their salaries were being slashed by half, down to as little as $200 per month. Joining me now to talk about this is Jonathan Shanza. He's a former terrorism finance analyst at the U.S. Treasury. Uh, thanks for your time. If we combine this memo with that airstrike in Mosul, where possibly millions of dollars of in cash was targeted, how do we assess the financial standing of ISIS right now? Well, I would actually probably describe this as a blow that hurts uh, ISIS in the short term. But in the long term, I think ISIS will continue to be able to accumulate cash, that they're able to do this through taxes, through plundering, through racketeering, uh, through oil, albeit at lower prices, uh, the sale of antiquities. They've got a lot of uh, financial uh, gains to be made through the territory that they control, and that is really uh, the key to, uh, to the financial success for ISIS. Now, if we take a look at the typical ISIS salary, if you can call it, among soldiers, it's estimated to be anywhere between $400 to $1,200 per month. Uh, they get $50, uh, $50 stipend if they have a wife, an additional $25 per child. If they are, in fact, to go through this salary slash of 50 percent would that impact recruitment at all do you not feel that it would at least have an effect on isis's momentum these next few months well i think actually a lot of the questions uh, uh revolve around whether uh the, the amount of money that isis is dangling for new recruits has dropped because a lot of the time we have seen uh, cash incentives for those that would like to cross the border from Turkey and to enter into Syria and to join ISIS. And that cash has been a huge incentive for a lot of these fighters. Once they're on the battlefield, uh, they probably have uh, less room to barter uh, than if they try to leave the battlefield that ISIS uh, enforcement, let's call them, could take care of them and, or, or perhaps punish them. Uh, and so that becomes a disincentive for them to leave the battlefield. And what about um, oil fields that ISIS had taken control of in between Iraq and Syria? Oil is now trading at much lower than it was last year. How might that hit their momentum? This is going to hurt. I mean, uh, when we're looking at oil at $30 a barrel, and then, of course, when, when you look at ISIS oil, this is illicit oil, so it's probably trading at uh, roughly half that or two-thirds that. So it becomes much more difficult for ISIS to gain a significant profit uh, from, from its oil sales. Uh, but again, you've got to note that despite the fact that oil has been a significant driver of income, that is, in fact, the, the racketeering and the taxes that have brought ISIS the, 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 the lion's share of the cash that they brought in. And so that's what we look at when we look at ISIS's long-term financial health. Well, we appreciate you coming in and speaking about this. Uh, former terrorism finance analyst at the U.S. Treasury, Jonathan Shanza, thanks for your time. Thank you.